And it appears that we are live. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Bear Show. My name is Bear with BearIndependent.com. Today, we are going to talk about the increasing threat in the South China Sea, Russia, and China teaming up to take a little field trip around Japan, as well as the ongoing shenaniganry with Chinese hypersonic missiles and uh it should be a blast ha 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 see what i did there what's up daniel collins shalom to everybody in the chat let's go ahead and get this party started if i can figure out how to alt tab appropriately there we go bear independent brief 29 october 2021 shout out to the dance monkeys by the way who assist daily in the development of these intel reports if you have intel you'd like to share with the bear nation intel at bearindependent.com or you could just send them an i love you note you know a little thanks for being such a hairy fine dance monkey you know uh yeah show them some love we appreciate them the media is still buzzing over the tensions in asia we recently covered the reaction to the chinese hypersonic missile test and it's still being talked about in a recent interview u.s general mark milley said of the event quote i don't know if it's quite a sputnik moment but I think it's very close to that. Uh, a little history refresher. A Sputnik moment refers to when the public was deeply concerned about the apparent technological gap between the U.S. and the Soviet Union after Sputnik 1, the world's first satellite, was launched by the Soviets in 1957. China Telecom has been banned from operating in the United States by the U.S. Federal Communications Commission, the FCC. This was because, in their words, it, quote, is subject to exploitation, influence, and control by the Chinese government, end quote, and is, quote, highly likely to be forced to comply with Chinese government requests without sufficient legal procedures subject to independent, ju independent judicial oversight, end quote. TikTok is still under fire, having testified in front of the Senate recently. CBS News reported, quote, TikTok's privacy policy indicates that it may share data collected on users with a parent company, subsidiary, or other affiliates of its corporate group, end quote. TikTok's parent company is ByteDance Technology, which now has a former CCP, Chinese Communist Party member, on the board. Senator Ted Cruz of Texas repeatedly asked about whether TikTok considers ByteDance part of its corporate group. But the head of the public policy, Michael Beckerman, refused to answer. By the summer of the U of ha, pause, start over. Tremendous, believe it. By the summer of this year, the U.S. had already banned 59 Chinese companies from American investments to prevent that growth from helping the military-industrial complex of the Chinese superpower. Even Biden recently made comments that the U.S. was committed to aiding Taiwan should the country be attacked by China, which of course received backlash from the Chinese foreign ministry. Taiwan's president, Tsai Ing-wen, said that the threat from China is growing every day and confirmed that the U.S. had military troops on Taiwanese soil for training purposes. Last year, Taiwan denied this after video footage of training on the island was posted and then, oops, deleted by the U.S., now, Taiwan seems ready to admit it as an open fact, which says something about the current state of the tensions. To add all of these threat indicators, China and Russia recently conducted an unusual joint exercise of 10 warships with airborne helicopters that travel through the international waters of Sugaro Street Strait between mainland Japan and the northern islands of Hokkaido, rounded the eastern coast and returned to China through the Osunami, or Osu Osumi? Osumi, there we go. Osumi Strait. Essentially, they circled mainland Japan together in an unprecedented fashion. Japan scrambled their fighter jets and, of course, expressed concern over the antagonist antagonistic exercise. Both China and Russia have separate territorial disputes with Japan over various islands, and Japan is completely aware of the threat should something in the region ever pop off. So, all that to say that things are looking a little... Uh, frosty over there in the uh south china sea let's go ahead and look at the news as always you have links to all of these articles we're going to read in the description here on youtube 
and on Patreon. Shout out to the patrons, the economic engine of the Bear Nation, who have raised $3,500 or so dollars today for a sister in need. I appreciate you boys and girls very much. You guys rock. If you'd like to join Patreon, there's a link in the description. It's like five bucks a month. And uh, there's like 30 or so exclusives of, exclusive pieces of content per month there. So do the math. It's not very much. Sun, and I figured we'd talk about this first because this is huge news in the prepper community. Maybe we'll talk about it on Monday. Maybe we won't. We'll see. Sun fires off major solar flare from Earth-facing sunspot. This from MSN.com. A major solar flare erupted from the sun on Thursday, 28 October, in the strongest storm yet off the star's current of the star's current weather cycle. By the way, uh, I'm hoping y'all can hear me. How's the uh, signal quality? Is it the best? Is it tremendous? Do you believe it? Everybody tells me it's the most beautiful 5x5 five five signal quality. Can you hear me? I'm guessing you can, otherwise there wouldn't be 600 of you here. John Plato, thanks. Ishmael Yoder. Uh, Ishmael, listen, you need to milk the cows and uh, hitch the horses to the wagon before sundown, you know? Your home church is going to get very upset. By the way, uh, shave that mustache and wear the appropriate type of suspenders and make sure you got a good straw hat, okay? Okay. And press your breeches. The sun fired off an X-class solar flare, its most powerful kind of flare, that peaked at 11.35 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, according to an alert from the U.S. Space Weather Prediction Center, which tracks space weather events. The flare caused a strong, caused a temporary but strong radio blackout across the sunlit side of Earth, centered on South America, the group wrote in a statement. NASA officials called the solar eruption a significant solar flare, adding that it was captured in real-time video by the space agency's Solar Dynamics Observatory. A coronal mass ejection from the flare, a huge eruption of charged particles, could reach Earth by Saturday or Sunday, just in time for Halloween. The eruption could supercharge Earth's northern lights and potentially interfere with satellite-based communications. A, a phenomenal resource for this is the YouTube channel Suspicious Observers. I imagine most of y'all are aware of Ben and the good work that he does at Suspicious Observers. But if you're not aware, you should go check out Ben because he has an incredibly high quality content revolving around space weather. And so you should go check that out uh, for further information on the solar flare that's going to end us all, bro. From everybody's favorite trusted news source, aljazeera.com. Top U.S. General. China missile test very close to a Sputnik moment. And here we have a picture of General Mark Milley looking ever so dapper, standing at a podium that says the President of the United States, which he is not. Although there seems to be some contention over who that person actually is, so maybe he's in the running. I don't know. If he is, I missed it, but I'm, nothing surprises me at this point. Back to the article, top U.S. General Mark Milley has called China's recent hypersonic missile test very close to a Sputnik moment. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff in an interview with Bloomberg TV called the test of a hypersonic weapon system, first reported by Financial Times last week, a very significant technological event that occurred. Quote, <coughs> he didn't cough, I did. Quote, I don't know if it's quite a Sputnik moment, but I think it's very close to that, he said in an interview that aired on Wednesday, referring to the Soviet Union's launch of a satellite in 1957 that signified their substantial lead in the so-called space race with the U.S. that defined that era. Like the Sputnik launch, analysts have said that China's test could launch a continuing technological race between the superpowers into hyperdrive. Milley added China's weapons system development was very concerning. Last week, Financial Times reported that China had conducted not one but two tests of a new hypersonic weapons system that did some blah blah blahs and then some more blah blah blahs happen. Milley's comment represents the most substantial public acknowledgement yet from a U.S. defense official on tests on the tests and their implications. Following the initial reports of the tests, U.S. President Joe Biden had said that he was concerned by the development. Beijing, for its part, has denied it was testing a hypersonic weapon, instead saying the test was of a reusable space vehicle. Except this space vehicle doesn't have landing gear and is capable of carrying munitions up to and including nuclear weapons. So, 
you know, nothing to worry about there. No big deal. From uh, the Chinese news network, I mean CNN.com, U.S. government bans China Telecom from operating in the country. Dateline, Hong Kong. And there's a lot of blah, blah, blah in this article. We'll hit a little bit of it. Washington is barring a major Chinese state-owned telecommunications firm from operating in the United States over national security concerns, an action that threatens to once again increase tensions between the world's two largest economies. Now, the reason for this, again, is that A, they cannot be trusted, and B, we don't want to be, believe it or not, funding our largest enemy in the world. I don't know how much of that I buy or not, but at least that's on the surface the argument for this. Little soup of H, sip of H2O. The U.S. Federal Communications Commission on Tuesday said it had ordered China Telecom to discontinue U.S. services within 60 days, citing findings that the company's American subsidiary is subject to exploitation, influence, and control by the Chinese government. China said this decision was disappointing. China Telecom has 370 million mobile customers. Uh, Here we go. In January, the New York Stock Exchange said it would delist three Chinese telecom stocks, including China Telecom, to comply with an executive order signed by then-President Donald Trump. The order banned Americans from investing in firms that the U.S. government suspects are either owned or controlled by the Chinese military. And there's the nugget right there. Washington has in recent years targeted other big Chinese firms with sanctions. Trump in 2019 barred U.S. firms from using telecom gear from sources the administration deems national security threats, an order that directly impacted Chinese firm Huawei, a major global provider of telecommunications equipment. It's also interesting to point out that China is putting up 5G equipment all around the globe and... I certainly believe, I cannot prove it, but I would think that they have backdoors into all of that equipment. Not so good. Not so good. If I was them, I would. I'd have a backdoor into all that equipment too. Also from CNN.com, Taiwan's president says the threat from China is increasing every day and confirms presence of U.S. military trainers on the island. And here's a picture of the president of Taiwan. I believe her name is Ng or something to that effect. I'm sure the article will tell us. Taipei, Taiwan. The leader of Taiwan, the island thrust into the center of rising tensions between the United States and China, said the threat from Beijing is growing every day, as for the first time she confirmed the presence of American troops on Taiwanese soil. Speaking with CNN in an exclusive interview, President Ng said Taiwan, which is located fewer than 200 kilometers or 124 miles away from China's southeastern coast, was a beacon of democracy that needed to be defended to uphold faith worldwide in democratic values. That's political speak for these commies are going to wipe us off the face of the earth and it's going to look really bad for all you people who say you love freedom if we get destroyed over here trying to do freedom things. She says, quote, Here is the island of 23 million people trying hard every day to protect ourselves and protect our democracy and making sure that our people have the kind of freedom they deserve. If we fail, then that means people that believe in these values would doubt whether these values that they should be fighting for, whether these are values that they should be fighting for. Apparently, my English is worse than hers. Taiwan and mainland China have been separately governed since the nationalists retreated to Taiwan at the end of the Chinese Civil War more than 70 years ago. Taiwan is now a flourishing democracy, but the mainland ruling, mainland's ruling Chinese Communist Party continues to view the island as an inseparable part of its territory, despite having never controlled it. Seems to be a trend with China. There's a lot of things that they claim are theirs, despite having never controlled them. Today, relations between Taipei and Beijing are at their lowest point in decades. Earlier this month, China's military sent a record number of warplanes into the air around Taiwan, while diplomats and state-run media warned of a possible invasion unless the island tows the CCP line. The U.S. military posted then and then deleted a video in early 2020 that showed U.S. Army Special Forces training soldiers in Taiwan. In November 2020, Taiwan's defense ministry announced and then denied to local media that U.S. troops were training locals on the island. 
Tsai or Ng or whatever her name is, the president of Taiwan, wouldn't say exactly how many U.S. military personnel are on the island at present, but said not as many people as we thought. We have a wide range of cooperation with the U.S. aiming at increasing our defense capability. And the article goes on from there. You can read it if you like. But essentially, suffice it to say that things are really starting to spin up in the South China Sea. To the point that Russia and China are doing joint ops around Japan. So that could really get interesting. Also from CNN.com. A joint Chinese and Russian naval exercise in which a flotilla of 10... I, I love it when people throw like $25 words into their articles. A flotilla. It's like they have a whiteboard full of words that they're hoping to use in an article. And somebody got to roll their rolly chair across the office and scratch out flotilla. And they got a gold star for their efforts. <sighs> a joint Chinese and Russian naval exercise in which a flotilla of 10 warships completed a near circle around Japan's main island has been touted by the two countries as a means of ensuring stability in a volatile region. Why is it volatile? Because of China in the first place. But analysts say the drills are likely to have the opposite effect, potentially reigniting regional tensions and enhancing claims by the Japanese government that it needs to increase military spending to counter Chinese aggression. Guys, it's just a matter of time before we have a hot war stemming in the South China Sea. And I don't know if you're aware or not, but one major theater of World War II was that region. And then the theater of the Korean War was that region. And then the theater of the Vietnam War was that region. Um, it's looking like we're going back there, men. Uh, yeah. What's that, uh, <laughs> what's that quote from the Princess Bride? And never start a land war in Asia. Well, we'll see. The voyage, billed as the fir first joint China-Russia naval patrol in the Western Pacific, saw the vessel sail through the Sugaro Strait that separates Japan's main island and its northern island of Hokkaido before heading down the nation's eastern coast and then back towards China the, through the Osumi Strait of the southern Japanese island of Kyushu. Though foreign vessels are permitted to sail through the Osumi and Sugaro Straits, both of which are regarded as international waters, the maneuvers were closely monitored in Japan. Quote, It will reinforce the conclusion that Japan has already drawn that China potentially presents a threat to Japan and therefore it has to increase its own defense spending and readiness to deal with it, said Drew Thompson, a former United States Defense Department official and a visiting senior research fellow at the blah, 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 blah. In a statement Monday, the Japanese Defense Ministry described the exercises, which ran throughout last week, as unusual. The China-Russia flotilla consisted of five warships from each country with a mix of destroyers, frigates, corvettes, and support ship ships. <coughs> the Chinese military said the two navies parted ways in the East China Sea on Saturday. Quote, the joint exercise and joint crews have further developed the China-Russia Comprehensive Strategic Partnership of Coordination for the New Era. That's an interesting phrase right there. For the New Era and effectively improved both sides' capabilities of joint operations, which was conducive to jointly maintaining international and regional strategic ability. Rear Admiral Bai Yaoping said of the People's Liberation Army, Northern Theater Command, and the Deputy Commander of the Navy said in a statement. Russia's Defense Ministry said the objective of the Joint Patrol was to demonstrate the state flags of Russia and China, maintain peace and stability in the Asia-Pacific region, and also protect facilities of both countries' maritime economic activity. Uh-huh. Tensions between China and Japan have spiked in recent years amid moves by Beijing to assert sovereignty, sovereignty over Japanese-controlled islands. China has also been stepping up its military pressure on nearby Taiwan, sending dozens of warplanes near the island. Japanese officials have previously tied the security situation in Ta Taiwan to Japan, noting that 90% of Japan's energy is imported through the areas around Taiwan. War is a game of resources. It is the allocation of certain resources against the protection of or acquisition of other certain 
resources. And as we continue down the slippery slope that we are on, as this turd of a world circles around the drain, things are going to tighten up. And as things tighten up, aggression will go from covert to overt because we have had myriad proxy wars with both China and Russia throughout the last several decades, but that won't be enough to cut it anymore. And so things are gonna go hot. Are they gonna go hot tomorrow? I have no idea. Are they gonna go hot a few years from now? I would say by 2025, I believe personally that we will be in a hot war with China. Y'all forbid we are in a hot war with China and Russia at the same time because men and women of the armed forces, I love y'all, but your commanders suck. And the commander in chief sucks. And I don't know, we have the capability to execute a war, but I don't know if we have the leadership to execute a war anymore. And I personally don't feel like learning either Russian or Mandarin right now. I've got way too many other things going on than to bust out the Rosetta Stone and start learning how to speak another language. <sighs> Though Japanese military spending pales in comparison with China, it has moved to significantly bolster its des defenses, adding state-of-the-art F-35 fighter jets and converting warships to aircraft carriers for them. It's also in the process of adding high-tech destroyers and submarines, all of which can project its power far from Japanese shores. The reach of Japan's self-defense force was clear on Monday, as one of the warships that will eventually be outfitted to carry F-35s, the helicopter destroyer JS Kaga, conducted bilateral exercises with the U.S. Navy Aircraft Strike Group in the South China Sea, almost all of which China claims as its sovereign territory. And so we've got China and Russia motoring along out there in the open ocean flexing their muscles and we've got japan and the united states doing the same i don't even know what's up with oz anymore i don't are there anybody left there are, are they allowed to leave their homes have, have the government overlords decided that their people are allowed to breathe fresh air again i'm not sure the condition of their military and their likelihood of getting involved i don't know because as we've seen in a previous report that entire region, believe it or not, I know it's astounding, that entire region that the economy of all those countries, including Oz, is directly tied to China. So, if you're Oz, what do you do? Your strongest military ally is the United States of America, which frankly is weak in leadership right now, and their economy is very soft like everybody else in the world, and their biggest ally might be going to war with their biggest trade partner. That could get really weird really quick. They are notably quiet on this, Australia is. And the article goes on from here if you'd like to read it. All this to say that things seem to be ramping up quite a bit. Do we still have a live stream? Holy cow, we got a live stream. 1,142 people here. That's incredible. What's up to all the blue wrenches? Everybody in the chat, I appreciate y'all for being here. I wanted to let you know over here at bearindependent.com. How do you spell Bear Independent? Uh, B A R E E N D U H P A N D E T Z L M N O P Q apostrophe asterisk rainbow semicolon dot com is how you spell Bear Independent dot com. Uh, if you click on the store, it's going to pull up the new Bear Independent store. And if you click on, you can get all your stickers, your patches all your swag over here right which is pretty cool you know if you need a unicorn that poops rainbows you can get those on your ninja sticker i like this goats and hose sticker that's pretty good the dance monkey sticker there's all kinds of stuff over here for stickers and patches but then if you click on american made durable goods this is something that we're going to be doing more and more of uh, at bear independent we want to support small businesses at bear independent and so if you are a small business that also has a Shopify store, please email admin at bearindependent.com. Let me repeat. If you are a small business that also has a Shopify store, it has to be Shopify in order to integrate with us, email admin at bearindependent.com and we can have a conversation about potentially getting your products into our store. Now, some of the products that are in our store, we've got an ultralight two light, ultralight two point sling from our brother Gary here. We've got survivalist family 
Prepared Americans for a Strong America by Pastor Joe Fox. Very good book. You can get some bear coffee here from disastercoffee.com. And then we've got uh, Sojourn Gear dump pouches. I run one on my war belt. I love it. The Sojourn Gear fanny pack. Uh, I, hey, I know these people. I love them. They're good people right here. And listen, fanny packs are not just for dad bods anymore. This particular fanny pack can hold Glock mags. Ask me how I know. Uh, the Sojourn Gear general purpose pouch. The Minuteman bag, which I love. I've uh, talked about it in a few videos. You can also get the three mag insert for the Minuteman bag, as well as the Minute Mag IFAC pouch and a pistol mag pouch that goes inside of that fanny pack. All that stuff from Sojourn Gear is here. We've got t shirts and hoodies and stuff from Sanctified Supply Co. The Shield Bearer of Faith. David used a rock. I use a Glock shirt. The uh, Stay Humble and Kind shirt, which is the unofficial, official, unofficial uniform of the Bear Nation, is now available at bearindependent.com. Not my way, but Yahweh. Great shirt. There's a whole bunch of stuff here. And um, we're also waiting on more handmade custom knives from Fleming Fabrications to come in as well. So shout out to our brother Travis there. So some exciting things happening at bearindependent.com. Uh, please feel free to go check them out. Our stores do close at sundown on Friday and then open again at sundown on Saturday because we observe the Sabbath. And so if you want to get some stuff from there, I would recommend that you do it pretty quickly. Otherwise, go ahead and do it after sundown on uh, what the world calls Saturday on Shabbat. Same thing with Refuge Medical. The store also closes there and the Father has blessed us immensely once we started making our store keep the Sabbath as well. But if you need handmade, made in America, guaranteed forever, uh, exceeding military specification first aid kits, you can get those at refugemedical.com. Uh, and all the things. We got the wound care bucket, uh, Wrangler Star, our buddy Wrangler Star did a phenomenal video on that, as did Magic Prepper, as did our buddy JJ at Reality uh, Prepping, as did um, Pastor Joe Fox at Viking Preparedness. Everybody who gets one of these wound care buckets loves them. Uh, well, and you could say the same thing about the Bear Fact. 78 five star reviews on the Bear Fact, right? The original, the OG Bear Fact designed to work the entirety of the mark march algorithm loaded with stuff i mean the contents of the bear fact you got the outer pouch the refuge patch gen 7 cat tourniquet uh quick clot trauma shears chest seals nasal pharyngeal airway six inch emergency trauma dressing five by nine pads triangular bandage compressed gauze survival blanket two by twos four by fours rolled gauze flat duct tape medical tape permanent marker, nitrile gloves, and antiseptic towelettes. Those are not what you use to clean your hands after you eat hot wings at Hooters. That's what you use to prep an area or clean up an area if there's been an injury, just so that we're on the same page. You got the small of the back kit here. Uh, everything you need to work the March algorithm weighs as much as one loaded AR magazine, little tiny kit, absolutely awesome, you know, handmade, guaranteed forever super high-end components also we've got all of your super high-end components if you want to you know roll your own you can do that with components from the store as well and all of this stuff is hsa and fsa eligible so if you got some money burning a hole in your pocket with your health savings account you can spend that at refugemedical.com and we thank you kindly because that's how i pay all the people that i love by the way, shout out to our team. We have an awesome team at Refuge Medical and at Refuge Training. Uh, I, I get the question all the time, Bear, I don't know how you do it all. Well, I don't do it all. I am surrounded by awesome people who do an awesome job and take a whole bunch of pride in what they do. And because they take a whole bunch of pride in what they do, there are literally 26 people still alive since we started this little business in my barn two years ago. 26 people still on the face of the earth because our team showed up for work. That is incredible to me. It's absolutely humbling to me. And so if you buy a kit from Refuge Medical or from anywhere else, and your next thought is, cool, I got the stuff. I don't know how to use it. Please go to refugetraining.com and come to class and we will teach you how to use it. It doesn't matter if you were in the military or if you're law enforcement or fire or EMS or in governmental agencies or if you're a soccer mom or a cubicle dad 
or a bus driver or a construction worker or a lawyer or a doctor. We've had several doctors take these classes and been blown away by the quality of the training. doesn't matter who you are. You need to understand how to use one of these blowout kits. Uh, it's just like having a rifle that's not zeroed. It doesn't matter if you don't know how to use it, right? Same thing with the first aid kit. And there are myriad classes that are up on the website right now at refugetraining.com, including a level one uh, stop the bleed in Charlotte, a level one in Orlando, level one in Phoenix, Arizona, a level one in Salt Lake City, Utah, a level three, which is tactical emergency casualty care, force on force with scenario based blue gun munitions type stuff. It's a blast. It's a ton of fun. You will learn more than you can remember at any of these classes, which is why we have handouts for you to take home as well. And you get a free training kit that you keep a hundred dollar value with, with each class. That's yours. You take it home for force multiplication. So you can teach the people that should have been at class, but weren't at class. We've had one guy wrote in that he has now trained over 40 people with the trainer kit that he got at one of our classes and with the stuff that he learned at our class. That's awesome. That's the whole point is force multiplication. That's exactly why we do this, right? And so you got a responder three in Phoenix. You've got a responder one, stop the bleed in Texarkana, Texas. Uh, responder one in Dallas, Texas. Responder one in Wichita, Kansas. And then the essential responder levels one, two, and three. This is a two day class in both Dallas and Salt Lake City, Orem, Utah area. And this is a four hour block of instruction on the March algorithm and stop, basics of stop the bleed in the morning. The afternoon is CPR and AED in a tactical setting. And then the following day, day two, is eight hours of tactical emergency casualty care, which is uh, situational awareness, active shooter response, uh, basic triage, self-aid, buddy aid, casavac, casualty, casualty evacuation, uh, force on force using blue guns. You know, you get shot at and you get to shoot people and, you know, deal with the bad guys and fix the wounds that they created and getting sprayed with blood and, you know, running with tourniquets and the whole nine. And it, it doesn't matter also, I think we should touch on this, it doesn't matter what your level of expertise is or what your level of physicality is. Our instructors are excellent. We have military police. We have law enforcement. We have Oklahoma Highway Patrolmen. We have uh, Marine Corps veterans, we have nurses, we have paramedics, we have SWAT cops that are all on our training staff. And they will work with each one of you individually to meet you where you are at so this stuff doesn't go over the top of your head. We don't let anybody leave class who hasn't gotten it. That is our goal to make sure that you understand these foundational tactical medicine concepts when you leave so that you can go be that light so that you can go save somebody's life in fact we've had two people who have used their trainer tourniquets which are real tourniquets they're just blue use their trainer tourniquets to save lives there are two lives that are have been directly saved attributed to the refuge training team and the kits that these people got at class one was a motor vehicle accident and one was an attempted suicide and praise yah both of those people survived because they had a blue tourniquet that came from training class applied to them. It's incredible. It blows me away. And so we very much so appreciate you supporting our small businesses. Uh, you guys are absolutely awesome. And um, I really hope I'll be in my mid fifties. Awesome. Just how I imagine living at the ass end of my life. Well, you're welcome. Isaac Cervantes. I'm not in charge of the world. Do you sell AE days? Uh, David Golafaro, email sales at refugemedical.com if you're interested in an AED. Sales at refugemedical.com. And with that, I very much so appreciate you, boys and girls. I, play, I pray that you have a blessed Sabbath, and uh, we will see each other soon. So, with that, Shabbat Shalom, my Hebrews, and Shalom.